All right, night two, successful. And look, I'm even looking Canada now. <laughs> totally playing the part yet again. Shannon is spoiled again at camping. <laughs> Scott's making breakfast. Hobbit home. <laughs> it is the perfect <laughs> Hobbit home. Now that is actually a Jeep tent, right? Um, honestly, it was just a cheap one I found on uh, Amazon. It was like a hundred bucks, and I figured I'd give it a go. Um, I mean, it doesn't look the greatest, but it keeps. I mean, the big thing is, is when it's raining, we could pull all this stuff right in there and just have the fire right in there and the chairs in there and everything. And it makes like a perfect setup for when it's inclement weather. Um, but you know, it's nice out, so we don't really need it. See, moment. but still, a hundred bucks. If you have an SUV, you can wrap it around an SUV. <laughs> but I don't know if you've checked out annex rooms, but a hundred bucks, I'm liking this idea. Oh, see, this is perfect. Camp Keeper, that's the name of it. So it's a camp keeper. It's like the Amazon brand or whatever. Well, like I said, you know, in bad weather, it's like, we'll just bring that fire pit. We'll set it right in here, throw a couple chairs in here. It warms up really nice in here. And then it'll warm up my uh, rooftop tent as well. Cause all that heat rises up into the tent. Oh, that's so, perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. It's all just wrapped around this trailer that I built. And you know, it's like a little house. <laughs> it is, it is, it's perfect. Yep, it works. Yep. Yeah, you had dry feet yesterday morning yeah. after the rain. I didn't. Yep. <laughs> a trailer setup like I have. So, I mean, the pros to yours is you can pack up camp and then move campsites real easily. Whereas my setup, like once I'm set up, I'm set up. It's like, I don't want to move this for a couple of days. Yep. Yeah. So if you're base camping, the trailer with a rooftop tent is definitely the way to go. But if you're changing campsites every single night, which I do on a lot of trips, so I'll like I have my other uh, rooftop tent on my Gladiator right now. That's just the the Rev Six uh, uh, tent by C Six Outdoor. Um, if I'm moving places every single night, I'll just stick with that setup. But like I said, I knew we were gonna have base camp for this, so yeah, it that's was perfect. why I brought everything. <laughs> it's perfect. All right, we're gonna get our breakfast on. All right. It is our last day of trailing before we uh, are heading back home tomorrow morning. But today we have no destinations. We are literally just going to explore and see where these trails take us. So no no telling if it's going to be flat, bumpy dirt roads or if there's going to be some cool water crossings like yesterday. But we'll see. No big plans. With today being an exploration day, we are finding ourselves on trails that are pretty much shortcuts to maintain roads. Some are well maintained while others not so much. With Scott knowing that I do mapping for Onyx as a trail guide, he asked if I wanted to start doing some recording. And as much fun as we had on the Tribag Mine Trail yesterday, 
I wanted to map out a green route. Although the blue trail we did is doable by most, I had a scenic route in mind that could be done by 4x4 Sprinter vans, mild overland builds, or any other stock 4x4 crossover that wanted to get to the Tribag Mine without the risk of vehicle damages, rolling over, or the pain exfoliation that the blue trail provided. This route will be released on Onyx in the upcoming weeks and has some very mild challenges, a mild water crossing, and a lot of places to stop and take in the scenery. After completing the mapping, we found ourselves back out on Washout Road. Yesterday was heart pounding with, will I make it anxiety? Today's a different day. I know I'll make it. Now let's see where it will take us, which wasn't too much farther than we were yesterday. We came up on this part that seems like the end until some oncoming ATVs kind of shot down the side of it, went through some trees and off they went. I was like, well, the trail does continue, but we're not getting through that. And of course, Scott is making his way to the other side and setting up cameras. Remember me saying yesterday was heart pounding filled with will I make it anxiety and today was different? Not anymore. I am in the Trail Expedition Gladiator, which is really cool because this Gladiator was an inspiration to me. Doing just a small little, oh, it's, oh, wow. He has a touchy pedal. Jeez, the torque in this thing. I was amazed by the difference between my Gladiator and Scott's Gladiator. They're both Eco Diesels, and they're both Rubicons. Scott is running an AEV spacer lift to accommodate 37s. Still has the factory Fox shocks and the factory wheels, and it felt very nimble, almost like a Wrangler JL. He is running lighter gear, probably around 400 pounds, and Thunderbolt, well, Full Clayton lift with Falcon shocks, plus Curry HD steering with a Falcon Nexus steering stabilizer, and some heavy aftermarket wheels. And I am close to probably about 900 pounds of added weight. So Thunderbolt is not nimble at all, and plows through trails like a tank. I'm sure I could adjust the steering stabilizer, but I like the tank feeling, but did enjoy the power of Scott's. So. Thunderbolt definitely needs some gears. I built a JL Wrangler for overlanding, and that Wrangler started this channel, and I've never felt it was ready. So I decided we need a Gladiator. Not just any Gladiator, I wanted diesel power. And my build list was completed before I even purchased this Gladiator. I had hours of YouTube research from the Story Till Now's Trail Wrecker, Sully from Ozark Overland, and the Gladiator in front of me. I cannot put it into words the beauty that Canada has to offer. I grew up in Michigan, spent my 20s and 30s in Las Vegas, and I have traveled a lot of the West before moving back to Michigan. We do have our own beauties across the US, but this was surreal, exploring another country. Speed limit signs are in kilometers, Fuel is in liters. Gas stations have the same snacks and candy, but with different names. And the people. Could have been the area, but the friendliness was so unexpected. And the accents are awesome. We say forest or woods, they say bush. We say process, 
they say process. It was cool. I know we have our different slangs and attitudes across the US, but I'm here in a different country, exploring and camping off grid. Not a lot of people can say they've done that. I can't believe I'm doing it. I want to thank Scott for inviting me on this trip and showing me what my build can handle. I know Thunderbolt may be overbuilt for Michigan or even my own confidence, but that's what I wanted. This is a new stage in my life and I'm loving every minute of it. Off-roading has always been in my life. YouTube is a hobby and videography has always been a passion. Taking in this scenery, being able to capture it and off-roading at the same time what a memorable epic experience i hope you've enjoyed this trip as much as we did back from Canada and it was time to clean Thunderbolt and believe it or not that's clean <laughs> Ooh, look at some Canadian pinstripes so make sure you guys keep a lookout on trail expeditions video of our Canada trip which will be out in a handful of weeks because I know he has a lot of videos that are in the pipeline that are going to release before Canada. So, thanks for watching. My name is Shannon. Hit the like and subscribe button. That really helps out the YouTube algorithm and will help out the Warthog Overland channel. Thanks, everybody.